All right. Uh, this is Mike Smith here with our featured athletes uh, coming out of D3. We got two of the guys from Conan. We got Trevor Pierce and Chris Taylor, uh, both part of a reemerging re program over there. Um, how are you, boys? Uh, we're all right. I'm doing all Excellent. right. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. All right. So we'll go right into the questions, boys. Um, how are you handling uh, this COVID-19 shelter in place sort of thing uh, with regard to your remote learning along with, so your remote learning is one part of that and training is the other part of that. Um, well, I think, I think that we kind of have an advantage as being like doing track as opposed to other sports uh, because we, the good thing about this is that we don't need nearly as much to keep training as other sports do. Um, so it's easy for us to just, go out and get a run in. So as far as training is, it's pretty easy to just get your mileage. Our track is still open. So we're able to do our track workouts. We're able to communicate with our two coaches on like what types of workouts they want us to do, what we should be doing each week. Um, so even though we're not like officially practicing, it's still easy to both practice social distancing and also to maintain our training by just kind of reaching out and practicing on our own. Um, yeah, it'd be tough to be on the boys volleyball team right now. I, yeah, I know. I can't <laughs> Um, but I, that's, that's all I got for training is that so far it's been pretty good other than just kind of having the motivation to go out and do it yourself. How about school? Uh, Chris, you want to take it? Um, yeah, for school, I've kind of fallen in with a schedule for it. Um, I get up around seven 30 every morning, have my coffee and then start class about eight 30. Um, it usually carries out to about, um, 11. And then after my classes, I usually go for a run and stuff. Yesterday, I think I did about 10 miles. I ran from my house, which is in range, all the way through Jaffrey and looped the background. So I think I think it's good for athletes. It gives a lot of more people an independent kind of training schedule, but you're also able to fall into your own schedules. And once you do that, I think it falls into place a lot better. Yeah, it's nice to be able to pick out the, the best time of the day to go out running if you need to, uh, as opposed to having to wait till, you know, that three o'clock hour that it would be if... Uh, you know, if we were actually in track season and temperature starts coming down and stuff like that, I know I've enjoyed being able to get out a little bit earlier, maybe being able to take advantage of going a little bit longer and stuff like that. Yeah, me too. I think like now I'm able to get a lot long, further mileage in just because depending on the time or I have a work schedule, I still work about five days a week. So being able to put this around my work schedule, that's actually pretty helpful. Yeah, definitely nice. Uh, Chris, when did you start competing in track and field? Um, I actually started track and field last year. Um, prior to that, my freshman and sophomore year, I played baseball, played JV baseball. I played baseball for most of my life, but um, with the new coach, I kind of thought maybe I should put my eggs in one basket with track and cross country. So I decided to do that, and I think it played out pretty well. Nice. Uh, Trevor, when did you start? Uh uh, actually, just like Chris, I was also a baseball guy, but I made my switch uh, over to running competitively in track and field my freshman year of high school, and I've been doing all three seasons since my freshman year. I think almost everybody, is, is, as a, uh, a boy you know, growing up, starts out in baseball at some point anyways. Right. Uh, sure. Trevor, Trevor, what's your favorite event and your PR in that event? Uh, yeah, so um, – I I've been like doing middle distance has been kind of my brand since I started. Uh, I started other than cross country. I did the 1000 in winter. And then immediately after having done the 1000, I said, I might as well, you know, the 800 was the closest thing. So I've kind of branched out into doing a used to what just used to be the 800 into now ranging from anything probably from the two to the eight. And then I can also do some upper distance, but the eight's always going to have a special place in my heart. Uh, because I firmly maintain, and anybody on our team will attest to this, I firmly, firmly maintain that the 800 is the hardest event you can do in track just because it is the perfect blend of all of the hard disciplines of sprinting and all of the endurance that comes from distance. And when you put those two together, you have this kind of race that really, really can beat you up if you don't know how to run it and if you don't run it with a strategy in mind. I would, I would think most people probably agree with you on that one. Chris? Uh, I really like the 32. I started doing the 3,000 a lot in indoor track. And I know I don't really have a PR in it. My 3,000 was about a 10. But my goal was going to try to get down low 10s in the 32 this year for spring track. Um, 
after cross country, I kind of fell in love with distance a lot more, and I realized I've gotten a lot better at distance than my sprinting. So it's kind of swapped over from sprinting into distance. So yeah, lots of times sprinters are born, and but you you can always build more endurance. So if you've got if you've got foot speed, then that certainly always helps at the end of a mile. Yeah, exactly. All right, uh, Chris. Um, what is your favorite competitive memory? Oh gosh. Um, I think, um, an indoor track run the four by eight. Um, I thought that was just crazy. Um, we had, uh, kind of like a B team out. Trevor wasn't on it that day. Um, he wasn't feeling too hot, but, um, we came around in D two, um, States and were able to pull off the fifth place. And we broke our school record by one second. But just to be able to have your name on a wall like that, just something, a title that's underneath your name, I think something like that's very important. And I see that as a valuable memory to myself. And, and that, team, that team was like, I mean, I was, I was out because I'd been sick. So the only race I'd run that day was the four by four. But I was watching splits. And it was so crazy to see that from like our year last year, to the indoor season this year, the testament we were able to come from not even qualifying last year to seriously running with some of those really competitive teams and like being noticed. It was, it, even though I was upset that I wasn't able to run it, I, I was amazing to me to watch those guys go. And like, just uh, so it's, it was a fantastic race. And yeah. And the first, first two legs of an indoor uh, four by eight are just insane. Just the number of bodies yeah. trying to fit in the yeah. same space. It's always I'm, crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm our, uh, I'm our second leg. So like I'm usually the makeup guy. So one of my jobs is to like pull ahead, but it was so awesome to see our guys pull together like that. Nice. What's uh, your favorite competitive memory that you were in? I think, I think my favorite, my favorite's got to be my, I think, my first year, my sophomore year of indoor track, the first time I ever won a race was so important to me for so many reasons. Um, one, it was so cool because I had kind of the underdog effect of my heat. I had all the upperclassmen guys um, who I was running against, and that was super nerve wracking, and I was seated fifth. But then coming in and uh, like winning my heat, I felt so awesome. Um, and it was my first kind of taste of what it's like to win like individually. And it was super motivating for me. I had a really, really good season where I PR consistently by like five seconds or something each race in my one K. Um, and I think that was my favorite memory. It was just for the first time crossing that line first, getting the, you know, having the bell lab be for you, stuff like that, that I got very comfortable with and eager to, you know, find in all of my races moving forward. Well, it's fun to win. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Um, if you could do any event, Trevor, uh, at all in track and field, which one would it be and why? Uh, I like to think I would like to give the long jump a shot because, like, I got pretty long legs, but I just never got into it. <laughs> like, I see the way, like, I imagine you must feel like you're flying because I heard about the technique. Like, I did the decathlon one time. You got to spread your arms and then you got to throw it forward. And, like, um, I, I'd like to give a field event to try, specifically like jumping, I think. When I was in high school, I tried everything because I, I had the one of the best two milers on my team and that would have been where I should have been. So I tried yeah. just about everything. Yeah. And like I think tried, my, yeah. Like I've tried so much, but like never, my, never jumped. Yeah. My, my, I think my furthest long jump would make me a mediocre uh, female high school long jumper. So I, yeah. I, I think I would stay away from that one. Chris, how about you? Um, I've always wanted to try javelin um, being a baseball player. I was usually center field and I was able to gun kids out from the fence. So, um, and a lot of, uh, javelin throwers are usually pretty short people. I mean, I'm not the tallest guy out there, but, um, I think I could give it a shot, but I would definitely love to try it. Yeah. I mean, I, I've given it a try, you know, trying to help people with practice and I, it's the one I, I just like, I can figure out how to tell them how to do uh, discus and shot put, but javelin, it's just this funky thing that some kids can just let that thing go. It's, it's, such a it's weird really play. fun to watch when they do it. You see in the Olympics too, like the way they like their entire bodies into it. And it's just like this whole like dramatic, like the yell and everything. It's well, so and then crazy. the thing like floats, it goes, you know, it actually gains yeah. altitude. It's crazy. Yeah. All right, Chris, favorite workout. Um, I really like ladder workouts. So I like starting off with like a 200 pretty hard, a 400, 800, going to a 16 and then maybe going to like a 22. Um, and then going back down, I 
definitely just love the um, burn you get from it. And especially the runner's high after you're done running. I think <laughs> it's, it's awesome. That's always a benefit. Trevor, favorite workout? Uh, I think my favorite workout is uh, the one. So our coach, the coach that runs with us, uh, he loves to pull workouts from like Olympic runners. Uh, and one of the ones he pulled from Sage Kennedy was um, this workout that's specifically geared for middle distance, which was one by four and then three by two. And we just keep pushing that. And I think at one point we, we remember we did like a crazy day where we did like five or six sets of that one time. And I remember feeling so, so good because those types of workouts are my wheelhouse. And it was just all of like our distance crew is super tight. So we all are in the same path. I'm sure as most teams are, but like we have such a good team mentality when we get through those workouts and we have a really tight pack and like we have no problem with letting people lead. And on those types of workouts, I usually like to lead the pack on those. And it's just, I love that workout because it, it does so much for me in my events. Nice, nice. Trevor, uh, this is kind of a combo question. So I'm going to ask, you know, what motivates you to do well in, in track and field? And how do your coaches play a role in that as well? So it's kind of what what's in for it for you, what's in for it for them? Yeah, I mean – I think, I think it's nice to segue off what I just said about having a really strong like team mentality. Um, and I say that in particular for our, I think it's, it's true for the entire team, but me being more of a distance kind of like a middle and distance kind of geared person, I can say that the, the kind of the, the bond, the bond that I have with the cross country guys and our, our, our like distance crew is it's the, it's the tightest thing I have. Uh, like I, I would do anything for those guys. When we step up to the line, I, I've never felt more motivated to go out and not run for myself than I want to, to run for those guys who it means something to. Um, and it's so, it's so weird because we've spent three, four years with some of these guys. And what that means to me is that some of these like smaller, like maybe it's just like a smaller practice or it might be like a smaller meet that's less competitive or something like that. Even those types of things, I it gives me so much more incentive to always, always do my best because it might mean something to any one of those guys, and it's important, and I'm an essential piece of that, that we all have success. So I would say that for both my team and my coaches, who I've spent two years with those guys, um, and we have absolutely the best coaches, I would say that one of – I would say it's best summed up by one of our coaches' creeds, which is run for, run for your teammates. Perfect. Chris, um, I definitely have to agree with Trevor on that. Um, just these pretty hard two, not to, right? I know. I mean, <laughs> um, these past two years um, have definitely changed my perspective on running. Um, since once we got the new coaches, before I kind of was just like, oh, running, whatever. But since we've gotten the new coaches, it's kind of grown into like a team mentality, and I've grown closer with these people, and I basically consider them family. Um, just. I want to say that it's just um, definitely life changing um, with the perspective, with my perspective on running. Um, I'm more competitive now than I ever was. Um, and I believe that before I just never had any competition. I was just kind of there just to show up and run. But um, having such a close team, I find very important. And it definitely has changed my perspective on running and my mentality as an athlete. Yeah. And the coaches are a part of that as well, right? Yes. I think. Uh, one of the things that our, our coach is full of quotes like he's a, he's a public speaker and it's and he's he's got so many things I could point out here that would answer this question best but like one of the things that he said is like running for other people is the change when you switch from running to yourself to running for your team you make the switch from learning how to run to learning how to win and I don't think there's a better way to say it than that nice Chris college plans and do they involve uh, track and field? I'm definitely running uh, cross country and track and field at Gordon. Um, I got accepted and I recently sent in my um, deposit um, about two weeks ago. So I've definitely committed to there. I already met the team when I went to go visit. The coach actually pulled me to the side um, away from the whole group on my tour. And he showed me all the ins and outs of the athletic facilities. Um, I met most of the team. And um, I was planning on doing an overnight in the beginning of April, but... <laughs> Thanks, that, yep. Put on hold. Put on hold for sure. Trevor? 
College plans? Uh, track and field? I'm, I'm planning to go to Emerson College in Boston for journalism. Um, and they don't, while they don't have a track team, it's Boston. So I've already looked at a ton of opportunities to run with teams there. So like one of the ones I was interested in looking at was one called the Boston Midnight Runners, um, which is like this group that they meet up once a week and they do like a 10K um, and they do a bunch of training. They have something that's like a boot camp type of thing. But also with that, like I said, it's Boston. So like there's a ton of different colleges that I've talked to and they're pretty open about like having people run with. So like maybe talking about running with some of the BU guys or something like that. But I got a lot of options. That's nice. Um, trails around there can be really nice. People think of yeah. Boston as being, uh, you know, super urban and everything like that. But they go right. out of their way to make sure there's places for people. Right. All right, right Trevor, favorite thing about track? Oh, my God. Uh, I could <sighs> Um, I think what I love most, I mean, Chris and I both have backgrounds from different sports. So I think we have like credence to say this, but what I love about track most is that unlike any sport, there is no luck involved. Uh, there's no like closing your eyes and praying that you're going to run faster. Um, there's, there's no other element involved in your success other than the work you put in. Um, so for me, it makes running like an excellent, excellent gauge of what I'm able to do and the commitment I'm able to put in and the success I have on the track is a direct result of the work I put in. Um, and that's kind of really fulfilling for me because in my eyes, track is, I mean, running as a whole is one of the most grueling things, or at least running at our level is one of the most grueling things you can put your body through. You know, there's like a reason that we look towards running, like, as as a gauge of what the human body is capable of doing you know what i mean it's why we look at the sub it's why we look at breaking a two-hour marathon as the feat of human athleticism it's just it's the best way to to show yourself what you're able to do and what you're able to go through but also to, and to do it with something that's so challenging like running i think is there's nothing more i guess not nothing i'm more proud of than seeing success i do in something like running i can't argue with you there Chris? Um, I think um, one of my favorite parts about track is just the people. Everyone who does track is definitely from another sport at one time in their life. But the thing is with it, they're all, they, everyone has their own different way, um, like peaks of performance, but everyone else, everyone puts in the hard work for it. No, it's not handed to anyone. And I believe that it just draws such a different crowd and the people are so different than other sports that you grow such a better like friendship or connection with some of the people you meet. Um, such as the Trinity guys for us at indoor track, we goofed around with them, but it's just, everyone's so open, regardless of the team you are, regardless of the competition, everyone's so much more open. And I believe that it's just such a better environment than a lot of other sports to me. I would agree with that wholeheartedly. I had a, I had a state championship shot putter and discus thrower that would come stand with me at the fence, uh, during the two mile. Uh, just because he, you know, as good as he was at his aspect of the sport, he just couldn't imagine from the fastest person running the two mile to the slowest person running the two mile that those kids were out there doing just that. And you don't, you don't get that in the other sports. I don't think not the same way. anyways. No. All right, also, boys. Whoop, go ahead. Oh, I never experienced that. No, no my also, I think also for us, maybe particular to D3, but like, it's so easy to find when Chris talked about like the people, it's so easy to find friends. Like we talked about Trinity, but like, also we know names from people from other teams, just based on yeah. how we've seen each other so much at meets. So like in our, I know that like, for example, I know that, and you like, you'll probably know this cause you know, as the Messina coach, but <laughs> like, uh, I know that when there's nobody to cheer for, I remember like at Co Brown meets, like if I see Landon in a heat on his own, I'll catch his 200 splits for him. You know what I mean? Right. Just like constantly find somebody to root for because there's so many people are getting cheered on by like other teams or other people you yep. know on other teams. You're not going to find that in any other sport than ours. That is true. All right. We're hitting the lightning round, boys. All right. We'll, uh, Trevor, seeing as you're on my screen right now, we'll go with you and then to Chris and back and forth. You ready? Yep. Free race meal. Uh, mac and cheese, easy. Chris? Salmon. I knew it was going to be salmon. How do I know that? You've already said that before. All That's Emma same. Piles' go-to as well. All right, ready? Pre-race yep. song. Uh, uh, Baba O'Reilly by The Who. Okay. Take It Easy, The Eagles. Take or Eagles. Okay. 
Take it easy racing, huh? All right. Yeah. Best advice you've been given and by who? Ooh, um, I, I'll say somebody, somebody always told me to uh, put more into anything you do than you do take out of it. So I would just say whenever you're going to do something, make sure that you leave something better. All right. Quote uh, by someone. Who was it? A long time ago. Yeah. Uh, he, he, was, uh, he was somebody I knew who helped me uh, a while ago. Uh, he, was a re he was a family friend. Excellent. Chris? Uh, if you're not first, you're last. Ricky Bobby. Ricky Bobby. Can't <laughs> go wrong with a Rippy, Ricky Bobby quote. All right. Um, if you could go anywhere in the world, where would it be? Japan. St. Thomas. Okay. And you've been there. So yeah, I'll you, go back. You, you know. All right. All right. What in the world would you do if you knew you could not fail? Oh, um, make a movie. All right. Stop the coronavirus outbreak. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Bring track back. Exactly. I, like my movie. I think my movie's more practical. <laughs> All right, boys. Uh, last thing. Uh, do you have shout outs? Uh, our coaches, definitely Coach E and Coach B. You guys are the best coaches in New Hampshire, hands down. I think I speak for both of us when I say that. Um, what, what's up, Carl? Evan Griffin. That's about it. <laughs> That's all I have to say. And the Flow Boys. They'll know who they are. All right, boys. Well, I'm glad we were able to, um, you know, interview you guys for seniors uh, interviews. And let's keep our fingers crossed that we'll find out at the end of this week that the season will be coming. And yes. uh, good luck to you guys in your futures. Uh, Thank you so much, Mr. Smith. Thanks so much. Yep. Thank you, boys. All right. Bye.